on today's episode of the Toy Chasers. The flag is in field day. This thing is huge. This thing is really, really cool toy, actually. All of this is from a one owner collection out of an attic. This is kind of lame. It looks like black ass GoBots, honestly. Shock Monster masks are very rare and expensive. This is why I do all that toy selling crap anyway. G.I. Joe is there. <laughs> So we have a friend named Scott who lives in Colorado and we happen to be in Colorado right now. He also deals in toys and he's got a garage full of toys. We need toys. You don't have to start out here. I just wanted to get my trash cans out okay. so we uh, could have a little bit more room in here. So we're here at Scott's, walking through the garage and it is full, full of boxes. Well, I see a whole uh, stack of Joe stuff over there. Basically all, a lot of Joe. That's gonna be some mixed vintage toys. I'm, I'm a dealer of toys kind of part-time. Um, it plays into my collecting habit. And I let people go through my stuff in my, in, uh, in my garage, sell stuff or stuff I just picked up and pick things out for their collection. I drove a trailer to, um, Conway, Arkansas. Okay. This guy had all this stuff. Talk, 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 talk. I want to my pants. Show me. One of the first things that catches my eye is the Cobra base, the Cobra Terradrome. Yeah, I thought so. Is there a flag? It's the Cobra Terradrome. Oh, Cobra Terradrome. Boxed on top of that. Is the stickers in there? This has been played with. Um, stickers applied. I had one of these when I was a kid. I. I believe this was like a Christmas present or something like that back in the day. All of this is from a one owner collection out of an attic, literally. Really? Yeah. So what'd you, what'd you pay for it? Uh, this I paid. Um, I paid the guy eight hundred bucks for everything. For everything. Yeah. Scott has the box to this thing, which is really neat. This is actually like one of my number one wants right now when it comes to toys. Deep in the jungle, you discover it. The Cobra Terradrome with gun emplacements almost everywhere and special base for refueling vehicles. There it is! The Cobra Terradrome is really incredible. That's Dr. Mindbender. And now, look, they've captured Flynn. It's time to warn the Joes, but suddenly they launch the fire bat. this box apart. Uh, this thing is massive, this thing is huge, this thing is really, really cool toy, actually. So here we have the Cobra Terradrome. I actually had this as a kid, I think got it as a birthday gift or Christmas. Me and Tim both actually were really big into G.I. Joe, so yeah, we definitely used this playset to its uh, max capabilities when we were younger. Very common for these pegs to be broke here. They attach down here. Some of them, some of them come down like this. Um, others swivel out. Um, it's very common to find these broken though. This one, this is in pretty rough shape. We got a big chip here. The Terradrome is one of my favorites and actually one of my most sought after uh, G.I. Joe toys. A lot of decals missing. All of this stuff should have decals on it. There should be a Cobra symbol right here. Um, this is kind of neat though. It's a neat toy. For me, it's a little too beat up. It's a uh, pretty rough shape. I don't think I'm gonna be a player on this one. If I bought this thing, I'm gonna forever be looking for something to replace it. Seems to have a lot. These things would connect here, all the way around along with like the turrets, but even this turret's broken right there. I just can't spend the money on something that I know I'm gonna be replacing down the road. I'd rather just spend the money one time. There's a lot of Joe parts in here, tons. I love Transformers, I love GoBots, I love a lot of different 80s toys, but I think G.I. Joe edges out most of them just because I have the most memories of it. What do you, what do you got in there? Uh, it's parts, these parts. You got one of the twins, you got, I mean, Destro. Put the rubber band on, you got a Destro, boom, there it is, forget about it, you need an O-ring. 
So I am seeing the G.I. Joe headquarters, or the command center, and it's in the box. Now the box isn't in the best shape. This is one that I've been, yeah, I've been keeping an eye out on that one. It's under attack! It's under attack! The G.I. Joe headquarters is under attack! This is it, the G.I. Joe headquarters, and there's never been a command post like it. Man the battle tank! A real American hero! I've located Cobra! We've captured a Cobra officer! Put him in his back cave! Yeah, so this is one of the... One of the few, uh, I guess, vehicles, play sets show that I still don't have that I had back then. This thing was relatively decent sized and uh, along with the aircraft carrier, didn't have any room to put it in my room. So all my, a lot of my G.I. Joe stuff just stayed out on the patio getting rained on. I distinctly remember being out in the backyard and me and my friends would just like keep throwing people in jail. <laughs> just cause I don't know, it just seemed so cool having a little gel you could just throw the Cobras into. Um, of course we destroyed the whole thing. Just a lot of fond memories of summers playing Joe, drinking Kool-Aid, those ice pops. I don't know if they still make them, but you're frozen and they, I don't know why that's a part of the memory, but it is. Uh, and yeah, those were the days. This is actually Sergeant Slaughter's Warthog. This is a uh, land and sea vehicle. This is actually in Revenge of the Nerds 3? 2. Was it 2? It was 2. We went yeah, they went to Paradise, up, right? To the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 2. That's 2, three, I think. 3 is the new class. Yes, I think that's right. And 4 is when Booger gets married. Yeah, so it's missing the stickers, like a like a growly kind of mouth thing going on in here. But these things they actually exist in real life, like most Joe vehicles were modeled after real life. Uh, Real life things, some minor altercations, but you can literally roll and get into the water and float. You know what it is about G.I. Joe is something about it's the military, it was the 80s, and they just, just fought for good. I don't know, maybe maybe because my parents were in the military. I don't know, there's something about G.I. Joe that I just always gravitated towards over other toy lines. It's always reminded me of like a offshore kind of yeah. oil rig. Well, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Did you have it? Yeah, I did. Um, I, did I hadn't thought about it since then until right now. This looks fairly complete too. Oh, that's, I actually have, I have, I, I didn't even know I had a gun on top. That's pretty good. I was missing the jump seat back here where someone can actually man the gun. I know you're looking for that one. Uh, yeah. I'm looking for it too. Not in the best shape. There's a ton of stuff in here. Not, not many figures at all actually, but a ton of vehicles in here. Oh. Shut up. Dragonfly. So I see here in this box a vehicle that I don't have that I need because I had it as a kid and that's the G.I. Joe Dragonfly. Oh. It's Major Blood and the Cobra Copter. They're after Gung Ho. Get the G.I. Joe Dragonfly Copter. Wild Bill to the rescue. Major Blood, look. Let's get out of here. Cobra turning tail. Want to live good, buddy? Yeah, I'd be able to super glue that. Yeah, that goes to it also. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, for a display, for non-functioning yeah. display, you know, yeah, it'd be fine. I uh, probably have the pilot. What's his name? Wild Bill. Wild Bill, yeah. I probably have Wild Bill. It's not too terribly expensive, so I think I'm gonna make a play on this, even though it's kind of broken. And by kind of broken, I mean really broken. But I don't play with my toys because I'm an adult. I just put them on the shelf, so. Okay, I'm lying. I do play with my toys. Because it's broken, I mean, I'd give you a hell of a deal on it. Because I just parted out. Hey, you want the Tiger Force version? No. Like, right after Tiger Force came out, I was kind of done with G.I. Joe. Transitioned into uh, Ninja Turtles. I had this thing as a kid. These barn doors move if they work. Ah, don't work. Yeah, but you open them up, you go, mmm. Yep, yep, here's the, here's the horse. I hadn't thought about this thing in years. I, I had this, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, I think it was more like a mechanical. Oh, Jesse fell off the top. My bad. You know, it's already starting. I'm gonna pull this out. Yeah, here. 
toy cave in here. I mean, this is all, a lot of the stuff under here is my personal stuff. To, uh -huh. I kind of keep it separated, but randomly in here, there'll be a, a few pieces that uh, I've got doubles of. So Scott says he has something that he thinks I'm gonna like, and he's gotta dig it out of the tub. Uh, I was just gonna show you these, these are really cool. I got these pretty recently. Oh, cool. Rem or ideal uh, monsters. I have Dracula and it's appropriate Frankenstein. Is your personal stuff then? Yeah. And Scott is right. He does have something that I like and have been looking for. It's the Vehicle Fortress. What? No, it's the Vehicle Force Voltron. In a sea of tubs. What is this? Oh. Yeah, that's the that's the vehicle force, man. That is the that's the one. That's the one I've been looking for. It's a it's a matchbox um, released in the U.S. but probably originally manufactured by somebody like Bandai or something right. in Japan. Um, but you know, there's the head. Right. I think that's a shoulder. That's a shoulder. Yep. That's the head so when it comes to the Vehicle Force Voltron, I don't remember much of the cartoon at all. I, I do remember the toys. Their team separate. I remember it being so cool because not only did it form a giant robot, but those 15 vehicles also formed three separate vehicles. So the five would combine into an air vehicle, and then the other five would combine into a sea vehicle, and then a land vehicle. So it was so interchangeable and super cool that you could form all these different things with it. And I, I just remember having a blast with it. Oh, here's his head. Oh, yeah. So, it's, I don't know how complete it is. It's not very common. Most Voltrons you're, you're gonna see out there are the lions, the common lions. It's the one most people had. So what are you uh, asking? Uh, I don't know, like 25 bucks, I think. I'll do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. $25 is an excellent price on this. Yeah, I mean, so it's got obvious damage and play wear, but. I like the cartoon. I wasn't super big into the toys back in the day. This is kind of lame. It looks like, like, like whack ass go bots, honestly. Since these are doubles, I mean, I mean, yeah. what if I could just, I'll take the ones I need. <clears throat> yeah. Unfortunately, the more I'm looking at this thing, the more I'm seeing that there seems to be just a lot of pieces missing. And again, I might be just remembering wrong, but I know that there are fists and their feet that are missing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pass on this, man. That sucks. And maybe I'm dumb for even turning this down, but I think I just wanna go and try to find it complete so I don't have to deal with finding other parts for it. I'm actually gonna pass on that because the more I start trying to put it together, I think there's a lot missing. Okay. Unfortunately, which okay. is cool. I mean, yeah, you can sell it for parts Did or you something. find Wild, Wild Bill? I found Wild Bill's torso. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, so he could still be coming. Uh, so what are you the, asking the on this? The copter as is, I mean, What's fair on that? It's broken. What are you What are you asking on this? Um, that is a free gift. <laughs> free gift. Yeah. Well, let's let's just see what else is on there. You all right? Yeah. 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 Okay. We've basically rummaged through everything here in the garage. Um, I want to go take a look at Scott's collection, his personal collection, which I don't think any of that is for sale. But I want to see what he has. Uh, Billy and Jay to see my toy collection just just to make them mad really essentially <laughs> why I do all that toy selling crap thing I mean I try to pay for this you know with the selling sure so that's not uncommon a lot of people do. yeah I mean a lot of my friends do that I mean I, I started reselling 
at the advice of a dealer that was like, dude, if you want a major toy collection, sell toys. You'll get toys. So I've been in many attics, many basements, many storage units, and just bought whole collections. And some of my grail pieces, my most expensive, hardest to find pieces have come out of large lots, thousand dollar toy. I'll take that toy out of the collection and I'll sell the rest. Scott's overall collection is pretty dope. A lot of really cool stuff here. And I kind of collect my childhood mostly. Obviously, I, have, I now have more stuff than, my, than I had in my childhood. Like, for instance, I had only a couple Shogun Warriors. This is like almost the entire collection. Uh, Shogun Warriors is a toy line that came out roughly started in 77 or 78 and then only ran until like 1979, so very short lived. But just a brief history of the line, Mattel went to Japan looking for toy lines to bring over to the US. This is pre-Transformers, pre-Micro uh, uh, Man. They picked up these giant robots, what they call, which, uh, which are known as Jumbo Machinders. Imagine you enter the world of the Shogun Warriors. They're on the move. There's Raideen with Delta Wing missiles, Dragoon with a star shooter, and Mazinga with a rocket launcher. The Shogun. These were from different properties in Japan, but what Mattel did was they created an umbrella property called Shogun Warriors. So they brought in disparate, like, you know, uh, licenses under this banner in the US only. So it's kind of unique in that in Japan, these aren't presented like this or na necessarily named the same. Um, this is uh, not my childhood one, I don't have it, but I had this one as a kid. I got it the year that I wanted Star Wars toys really, really bad, but there was like no Star Wars toys yet. Christmas 77. So I got this thing and I, I fell in love with it. I mean, I just, I was crazy about this toy. Godzilla does say Shogun Warriors. It has his name uh, big on the box, not like those. Those all prominently display Shogun Warriors. Godzilla is prominent on, the, on his box, but it does say Shogun Warriors. And then they came out with Rodan and they dropped the Shogun Warriors moniker and they came up with world's greatest monsters. So my theory is, and I don't know this because I've been to Mattel headquarters and I've asked people, there's not a lot of people very knowledgeable about this line, unfortunately, but I, my theory is, is that with the success of the Godzilla toy being the probably the best selling Shogun Warrior and most common, that they were gonna go branch off in a new direction with Rodan and a world's greatest monster. So what's cool about going into seeing other people's toy collections like this, especially somebody like Scott, who was into different things than we were, is you get to see different things. You get to see what, what things they're into. And Scott's toy room is definitely a 70s toy room for the most part. I had a photo of this wall right here that I showed him and he goes, that's what I want our set to look like. So Scott here has actually worked with Mark Hamill. He produced a show called Pop Culture Quest that was hosted by Mark Hamill. Mark has never been here. He wanted to film here. Uh, he's really into collections. He's a, this this Godzilla right here we used on Pop Culture Quest and Mark Mark played with him and, and he's screen used, uh, held by Mark Hamill, I guess. What was fun about working with Mark is he's really into this stuff. He likes collectors. You know, he, he he likes to hang around collectors. He likes to talk to collectors. He likes to see their stuff. It'd be a lot cooler to hang out with Mark Hamill doing this sort of thing than us. So he's kind of downgrading by allowing us here. <laughs> that Godzilla game was one of my, man, I looked and I finally got it from Rich. I know, oh, you, nice. you got that poster from Rich, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did, I did. Man, yeah. Rich comes across the craziest things, man. I'm seeing pretty much any toy line that I could I can even think of, except maybe like Mad Balls and, and tra funny enough, no Transformers. I guess Scott was not in the Transformers. Totally got I I, I can't compute. I got so lucky on that blue snag. Cause they, they sell, that one in that condition would be a 350 easy, 350, 400 bucks. I go to the Chicago toy show and just happen to literally walk up on a guy setting up his table and this was his childhood collection. Like he would came to the Chicago, he's not a regular dealer, just came to get rid of his stuff rented a table. So I walk up and I'm, he's got like a pile of Star Wars figures and blue snags in it. So I, I pick it up and I'm like, 
how much are the Star Wars figures? And he's like, 15 bucks a piece. Well, it's up to the seller to know what they got. Yeah. So. I mean, if it's a friend, they that's says, different. dude, I don't know what this is worth. Blah, yeah, blah, that's blah. different. Get, you know, let's be fair. Then I'll if, say, dude, that's a $300 toy. Okay. If I'm asked, and I've been asked by vendors, I don't know, what's it worth? I'll tell them. I'm honest with them. But you yeah. know, if I go, hey, what do you want for this? And they give me a number. Psh, okay, here you go. Yeah. In contrast, you know, I had to give 250 bucks for that guy. So you get deals, yeah. and sometimes you pay full retail. Those um, those heads had candy in them, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, candy heads. And I love those things too. I, I remember buying those at the Quick Trip. We had a school library, and of course, school libraries in elementary school always had like monster books like this. But I loved books like these when I was a kid, and that Scholastic Book Club, you could order them and stuff. So I didn't really have any toys, um, but I loved monsters, and I drew monster pictures a lot when I was a kid. As an adult, I just found myself kind of drawn to Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, all the classics, um, stuff like that. I did like to make my, for myself Halloween costumes back in the 70s. I built, I always built my own because I, I thought the store-bought suits were dumb. Um, so this is a costume, this is not my childhood one, but this is a mask uh, that I had as a kid and it was the shock monster, it's called the shock monster. This drawing of the shock monster was in Famous Monsters magazine and that's what you thought you, your mask was going to look like and you got this goofball thing. But shock monster uh, masks are very rare and expensive. Like this, I don't even know how to price it because of the condition that it's in. It's, it's got some problems, but it's in decent shape and it has all its hair. It's four or $500 mask, just because they're so hard to find now. And, and the materials are so flimsy. Uh, this I had preserved, professionally preserved, because it, it's starting to rot, but eventually it'll crumble to nothing. You know, like all this stuff will, plastic stuff. game I had as a kid. A lot of this stuff I had as a kid. This Enterprise, this is like a grail piece for a lot of people. Those are hard to find. I had one as a kid. That's just barely thicker than like those old masks. Yeah. I would say if there's one thing that I'm uh, actually super jealous about is the Star Trek stuff. The original series cast movies, that era of Star Trek is the, without a doubt, the best for me. The Enterprise, the refit Enterprise, the best Enterprise. This is my favorite Enterprise of all time. So just anything that has like the Enterprise artwork on the box, I don't even care what it is. Um, there's a there's a space design center up there. Would have no interest in ever playing with that or messing with it, but because of the art on the box and the way it looks, I'm, I'm absolutely just, if I saw it out and about, I would pick it up in a heartbeat. Uh, the bridge, uh, the motion picture bridge, but this is super cool. Like most of this stuff, I've never ever seen uh out and about like this is the first time i've ever seen that uh first time i've ever seen that 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 um so yeah that which is really cool i love the artwork right there this bridge set up man i am jealous of this man big time big time you have to lock your doors tonight uh, just the idea of being on this ship and, and, and exploring space it just opened up my imagination like nothing else and uh i i, I just had this connection with it and it just is is one of the coolest things that uh, I haven't been able to get into with collecting because I simply just don't find that stuff but I would love to speaking of uh, Star Trek check this out that's the original Migo Gorn and this is the re-release that came out in the 90s or early 2000s which is more screen accurate so there's that, but check this out. Look what I have. Oh, sweet, that's that same one. That's it. That's Didn't you say that that was rare? Yes. It came across too, that's great. Yeah. The 
this is an extra if you're interested. Oh, you mean for sale? Yeah. I mean, that's, there's mine. How much he asked it for? Uh, like, I, have, I don't even know ballpark. That ran me a lot. Yeah, like 200 bucks. Okay. Like, literally. I bought it at the Chicago Toy Show. Okay. Um, something I've been searching high and low for. So, right after, of course, I spend the big bucks to get a really, really nice one, I find this one at the flea market for probably like $5. So Scott pulls out this second Enterprise, electronic Enterprise. I don't know if the electronics work. I don't yeah. even know if all the parts are there. There are some stickers. I'm a little afraid to insult him with any sort of offer. I'm just gonna see what he says. Two of these and the saucer section. Mm -hmm. So it is complete. Okay. It has the back hatch. It's an expensive toy, of course, but this one is gonna need some work. This is a project. Uh, I'm gonna guess that you'll wanna clean it, try and bleach this or scrub yeah. it or something, get that yellow off of it and then glue it back together or screw it back together. I don't even know how it assembles. This is super cool, but like at the same time, it's like I can't go throwing $100 or $150 or whatever on a toy right now. But I mean, I, I got lucky. Yeah. I spent five bucks on it, I'll pass it on for five bucks just cause it was a lucky deal and I, I just got that one. I'll do $5 though. $5 for Star Trek toy? Sign me up! Trekkies might be might be one up on LARPers. LARPers is probably the lowest form of nerd. I wanted to go you to sure a good home. Yeah, you yeah. sure? Yeah. It's just not a real common toy. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Dude. Yeah. He's been into my room. He's seen the plastic models that I have of the Enterprise and stuff. So I, I, I think he knew that I'd be all in on this. And, you know, for him to hook it up at $5 is what, what he paid at the flea market. Uh, just goes to show you he's a good guy. Because uh, not not everybody's gonna do that, friend or not. I enjoyed, uh, especially Jay, because he likes GI Joe, and I had that raw GI Joe collection straight out of an attic. Um, it was fun to watch him uh, dig through the boxes and everything. So I, I like looking at the looks on people's face when they're looking at toys, and when when people see something from their childhood and the look on their face, that's to me is like priceless. It was cool from the perspective of, I'm seeing things I've never seen before, um, not just having a show pieces just for the hell of it, but something that, hey, when I put this on the shelf, it means something to me. And as big as his room is, I think everything on his shelf it meant something to him. So I left here today getting the Enterprise for $5 and the Dragonfly. And uh, you know, I really wanted to get that GI Joe headquarters, but it's a long drive to Texas. I would have had to put it in the back of the truck. I said it earlier, the uh, Cobra Terror Drone was actually one of my most sought after GI Joe I guess play sets, for lack of a better term, it's not a vehicle. There's a lot of pieces there, there was some missing. Uh, it was in bad enough shape to where I passed on it because I would have forever been looking for a replacement. So if I'm gonna look for a replacement, might as well just buy one that I want in the condition I want it in. So I did get this Beast Man. Master Universe. This is actually an eraser, 1984. There were several different characters from He-Man to Skeletor to Merman, Evil Lynn, uh, Beast Man, obviously Ram Man. But one, I like Master of the Universe. Two, uh, when I was a kid, my mom bought these and used them as cake toppers for a birthday one year. So I actually have the He-Man and Ram Man, and I got the Beast Man. <laughs> Collecting is all about getting the things you used to have, getting the stuff that your parents got rid of. It's, it's about reacquiring those things that you have fond memories of and taking it a step further and getting the things you always wanted but never could when you were young. Uh, G.I. Joe, real American hero. G.I. Joe is there. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd almost rather just pay a little bit more for it to have everything there so I don't have to search and continuously look. And now maybe maybe that changes down down the down the way. Melver, Melver called and was like, get anything? I'm like, nah, man, it was a lot of parts and pieces and this and that. So you buy it anyways, dude. You buy it anyways. That was Melvor. I'm like, well, you know, I didn't though. Wait, wait, what's wrong with you? I'm like, okay, well, we're almost out of Colorado, you idiot. I'm not turning around, so it doesn't matter. Um, and maybe he's right. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, when it comes to video games, I've Frankensteined a lot of things together that way. Toys, toys is just a little bit different. Um, if there were figures with no weapons, no accessories, I, I, I pick them up. 
Uh, but when it comes to vehicles, play sets, stuff like that, I would rather I'd rather buy it whole. 